Hello, my name is Brandon Chetikovsky, and this is a video for ME 4031W at the University of Minnesota. Today we are going to be discussing the use of an operational amplifier in common electronic circuits. For example, circuits that you may use in your final projects at the end of this course. First, I will show you the necessity of using an operational amplifier in some circuits, then we will discuss the operation of a breadboard, Next, we will build a microphone circuit step-by-step -step that includes an LM741 op-amp. And finally, I will demonstrate the use of an LM741 op-amp in a thermocouple circuit with a type K thermocouple. To start off with, let's discuss the measurement of sound with an electric condenser microphone. If we consult the specification sheet given by the manufacturer of the microphone, we find that the sheet includes a circuit diagram that can be used to measure sound. We see that the circuit includes a 1 microfarad capacitor attached to terminal 1 on the microphone, and we measure output voltage across this capacitor. We also have a 1 kilo ohm resistor that is connected between terminal 1 of the microphone and the positive 5 volt source on the DAC. And then terminal 2 is connected to the ground of the DAC. We can tell the difference between terminal 1 and 2 on the microphone through the three metal pins that are attached to terminal 2 on the underside of the microphone. Now, this circuit was used to measure the frequency of a note played on a guitar string using a LabVIEW VI whose front panel is shown on the right side of the screen. On the top figure, we can see the output voltage that was measured across the capacitor, and we can see that this voltage has an approximately 1.4 volt DC offset. Now, if we consult the specification sheet for the USB 6009 DAC that was used to take this measurement, we see that when the voltage on an analog input pin is very low, or the DAC assistant accesses a pin that is not measuring any voltage, the default voltage registered out by the DAC is 1.4 volts. So this 1.4 volt offset might be a function of merely the design of the DAC. If this is the case, we can filter the signal using a high pass filter to take out the DC offset and then view the filtered signal for any frequencies inherent therein. The filtered signal is shown in the bottom figure on the left, and we can see that the 1.4 volt DC offset has been filtered out. We can then perform an FFT on this filtered signal to view the frequency content of the measured signal, and the FFT is shown on the bottom right. There, we'll see that three frequency peaks show up, and that the peak with the highest amplitude has an amplitude of approximately 25 millivolts, and that the amplitude decreases with increasing frequency. Now, the USB 6009 has a resolution of 2.44 millivolts, and that is only one order of magnitude lower than the largest amplitude that is measured in this signal. With our resolution being only one order of magnitude lower than our highest amplitude in this signal, we have relatively little confidence in the measured amplitudes, especially those at higher frequencies. We would have much greater confidence if we amplified this signal to a higher level, so the resolution is a much smaller percentage of the actual measured amplitude. One way that we can amplify the signal is by using an operational amplifier and we will go through the steps of building a circuit with this microphone using an LM741 op-amp. But before we get to that, I want to discuss the function of a breadboard, and then we will start building the circuit. Now, we can see on the breadboard to the right that there are columns on the left side of the breadboard labeled A through E, and columns on the right labeled F through J. All of the ports in a single row on the breadboard are all connected. So, ports A through E in row 1 are all connected, and ports A through E in row 5 are connected, for example. However, row 1 is not connected to row 5. None of the ports in a column are connected, with the exception of the two columns that show up to the far left and those on the far right of the breadboard. All of the ports in the column next to the blue line are attached, and all of the ports in the column next to the red line are all attached. Because the ports in these vertical columns are attached, the blue and red columns to the far left and those to the far right of the breadboard are frequently attached to a voltage source and a ground. As well, the left side and the right side of the breadboard are completely independent of each other. Now that we have discussed the function of a breadboard, let's move forward with building the microphone circuit. If we consult the common electronics document that is posted to the course website, we can see in there that a circuit is included for use of the microphone with an LM741 op-amp. We also see that included in that document is the wiring diagram for the op-amp. Using these two circuit diagrams, we can see that the microphone includes a 1 kilo ohm resistor connected to the 5 volt source of the DAC and terminal 1 of the microphone. Terminal 2 of the microphone is connected to the ground of the DAC 
and pin number 3 of the op amp. Terminal 1 of the microphone is then connected to a capacitor and a resistor R2 that are in series, and the second end of the resistor is connected to pin 2 on the op amp. Now, because an op amp amplifies a signal from a lower voltage to a higher voltage, we need to supply voltage to the op amp, and this is done via the use of two batteries. Battery number 1 is connected between the ground of the DAC and pin number 4, supplying a negative voltage. Battery 2 is connected between ground and pin 7, giving a positive supply. The amplification factor for this circuit is given by the ratio of resistor 1 to resistor 2. So, by connecting pin number 2 to the output, pin number 6, via a 100 kilo ohm resistor, we achieve an amplification factor of 100. If we were to use this circuit to measure the signal we measured in the example previous, we would measure a 2.5 volt signal rather than a 25 millivolt signal. Let's consider building this circuit step by step. First, we start by simply connecting the microphone to the DAC. On the left of the screen, we can see that there is a circuit diagram with some wires that are colored, and some wires that are dashed. As we move forward in building this circuit, any steps in the circuit that have not been completed, and are not shown on the breadboard to the right, show up as dashed lines in the circuit diagram. The steps that have been completed show up as colored lines, with the color of the line corresponding to the color of the wires for that step on the breadboard. Here, we can see that the 1 kilo ohm resistor is connected between terminal 1 and the 5 volt source of the DAC, where the 5 volt source is connected to the column with the red line. Thus, all of the ports in that column are at 5 volts. The ground of the DAC is connected to the blue column, and the blue column is connected to terminal 2 on the microphone. Next, we attach the 1 microfarad capacitor in series to the 1 kilo ohm resistor, R2, and then connect this resistor to pin number 2 on the operational amplifier. As well, we connect terminal 2 on the microphone to pin number 3 on the op amp, grounding pin 3. After this, we connect the two batteries to supply voltage to the operational amplifier. However, we will take this in two steps. First, we connect battery 1. As stated before, battery 1 supplies a negative voltage to the op amp. Therefore, the positive terminal of the battery, shown by the red wire on the right side of the breadboard, is connected to pin number 3 and ground, and the negative terminal of the battery, the black line on the right of the breadboard, is connected to pin number 4 to supply negative voltage. Next, we attach battery number 2 to supply positive voltage. Therefore, the positive terminal of the battery is connected to pin 7 on the operational amplifier, and the negative terminal on the battery is connected to pin number 3 of the op amp, and, therefore, the ground of the DAC. Finally, we connect the 100 kilo ohm resistor R1 between pin number 2 and pin number 6 on the op amp, and we will read out the output voltage using the yellow wire shown on the right side of the breadboard. This yellow wire is attached to one of the analog inputs on the DAC. Because the entire circuit is powered via the 5 volt source on the DAC and grounded to the ground of the DAC, we can take this measurement using the RSE, or Reference Single-Ended, mode in the DAC Assistant. Now that we have gone through step by step to build this microphone circuit, let's consider one final example of the use of an LM741 op amp in a thermocouple circuit. We can see the thermocouple circuit shown on the left of the screen. The connection between the measured temperature and the reference temperature looks a little bit different than what we have seen before. However, it can be shown that connecting the thermocouple in this way is equivalent to placing both junctions of the thermocouple reference end in a reference temperature and then connecting to the rest of the circuit using copper wires, as we did in the time constant lab earlier in the course. In this circuit, the yellow and red wires of the thermocouple are connected to the yellow and red wires on the left of the breadboard. This circuit overall is similar to the previous circuit with an amplification factor of 100 and two batteries supplying power, battery 1 supplying negative voltage and battery 2 supplying positive voltage. However, this circuit is slightly different than the microphone circuit. Similar to before, this circuit is a differentiating circuit where the voltage amplified is actually the difference between pins 2 and 3 on the op amp. However, neither of these two voltages are in reference to the ground of the DAC, whereas those in the microphone circuit were. So, in order to be able to take a measurement of the output voltage with reference to the ground of the DAC, we must ground the circuit by attaching pin number 3 and the battery terminals connected to pin number 3 to the ground of the DAC. 
This is shown via the use of the black wire on the left of the breadboard. We should also keep in mind here that all operational amplifiers contain a DC offset inherent within them. So, if you are measuring voltage amplitude out of this operational amplifier, you should account for that DC offset in some way. As well, keep in mind that if you are measuring voltage and then performing a conversion from voltage to something else, such as temperature as done here, we should also take into account the amplification factor of the circuit before performing that conversion. Now that we have gone through these two examples, I hope you will all have the confidence to build a circuit with an op-amp if necessary. Thank you.